All right, I wanted to record this from my computer, but my computer is having a damn problem. Um, so this is a really brief update of uh, where the project is. Um, so over the last couple weeks, I've hit a lot of snags with this thing. Uh, nothing that I couldn't get through. Um, but uh, I'll tell you, when you're working on a project this long, the burnout risk, the burnout risk is real. I mean, I really couple times was you know it's been about six or seven months since I've started this effort now and and a part of me is kind of wondering you know like what am I doing with all my free time you know this this is getting out of hand and uh, let me get my clicker that was this thing so you know the project is going well it's just a part of me really wanted to be way ahead of um, way ahead of where I am by now you know uh, I could talk about some of the snags I hit. I don't even know if I can remember some of them. So I've been just just going a lot of UI. I mean, all these little toolbars that pop up, they don't look good when you're recording the video. They look a lot better in real life because they're actually transparent. But um, getting all these little stupid widgets to, to operate when you, when you click on them and making sure all the logic works and when you want to scale versus uniform scales, non-uniform scales, keeping the aspect... Um, a big amount of work was trying to figure out the logic for, for I did not mean to do that, uh, trying to figure out the logic for dragging a box, making sure all that works. Um, so there was, there was a lot involved with that. Um, I'm sure there's some stuff I'm missing, but I just want to get to the, to the probably the most complicated thing I've had to do in the past couple weeks, which was uh, implementing this list view and implementing texture maps, texture mapping setting, and material setting for every single object within the scene. Let me make a cube here. Oh, I can't do that while this is open. So let me just add some stuff. So here's the freaking cube. Nice cube. Scale it so it's big enough to freaking see. So all these, like I said, I'll added all these widgets so that I could do all this stuff um, within the editor. But anyway, if I, if I go into here, this list box can actually scroll, so I don't have enough items in it to actually scroll. Uh, I could sh I could throw up another video to demonstrate what I mean, but um, this allows me to actually finally represent large data sets that you would need to scroll through on the holographic UI. So there was a lot of work involved in that because, like I said, I have to do everything from scratch with this framework. I'm writing everything here, so there was quite a bit of stuff with that. Uh, the one thing I'm excited about, and I probably should actually talk about for more than a second, is this um, 3D uh, control that I made for for the color wheel so that you can actually pick and push and pull uh, the color um, in three dimensions where the, the first two are the saturation and hue and then the third one is that lightness which actually will affect of the object in real time as you manipulate the settings for it. So that's pretty cool. I'm um, just going to play around with some more of these. So that was a big deal to be able to do that. Um, yeah, that took me quite a bit of time because I actually had to write quite a bit of logic for uh, 3D um, for, for 3D control uh, input. So it wasn't as simple as some of my other UI types. So once I got that going, I figured it was time to actually dive into one of the most complicated things I was ever going to have to do. Of course, I say that with everything I have to do with this project, which was actually getting texture maps into the HoloLens app when there's no file system on the HoloLens. So, of course, with the built-in textures, that wasn't so bad. I was essentially able to just store them with the app, much like I do with the iOS version, and load those in as you pick them, and everything seems to work out fine. Where things get really complicated are when I need to bring the files in dynamically from the user's own personal, you know, uh, selection of files which might contain texture maps. So just making this a little brighter. So in order for me to do that, I had to develop my own networking library and my own HTTP client from scratch in C++. And then I had to get that client library talking to the Google Drive web API to finally allow myself to list uh, a selection of uh, user a user's Google Drive files, and this was an insane amount of work to do and get everything to download properly, and 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 come into the scene. Of course, every all these operations when I'm looking at these files is asynchronous, 
So there was a ton of threading involved with this, um, getting all this stuff to cooperate. The Windows 10 um, APIs for um, working with images is a nightmare. It's a complete disaster um, because everything has to be done asynchronously and all those asynchronous operations have to be done on a background thread and you have to use the Windows 10 uh, C++ CX APIs to do all that. So um, that stuff was really brutal. Um, but finally after you know nine hours of work I was able to get um, I was able to get the um, these these textures downloaded in, into the uh, into the actual app through Google Drive and I'm really happy with that of course I had to pick the most ridiculous uh, image ever as an example but um this is uh, this is going quite well uh, now that I have these in here um, so I'm trying to remember if I left anything out. There, there's like I said, it's been it's been over a month since my last update. It's really just been trying to get all of this stuff uh, working. Um, I could go into the code, but there's just so many things I had to do um, to get all this stuff to cooperate. There were some performance concerns I had with stacking these many. Um, I don't know if you could see it. Let me just try to get a better view. So many of these UI boxes on top of each other. But um, even though it's stuttering, it's just because I'm recording a video right now, which drops the HoloLens frame rate down to 30 frames a second. It's pretty good considering this will probably be the most complicated modal workflow in the entire app, this texture map setting. And if it's able to keep up when I'm doing this, even while I'm recording, uh, I'm not too concerned. Um, with the uh, with the performance, so um, I don't even know what this file is. Oh, this is just something stupid. So uh, so far, that all seems to be working um, pretty well. So just messing around with some settings here. <laughs> I can always make myself laugh at least. Um, but yeah, this has been a pretty stressful couple of weeks. Uh, I think the biggest source of stress for me right now is that uh, there's just so much left to be done before I can consider this thing anywhere near uh, a, a finished pro uh, product. Uh, I haven't even started the edit mode yet where you can start editing the polygons. Um, there's quite a few uh, settings I still need to do even outside of edit mode uh, with respect to a lot of the shader settings and stuff like that. But um, now that I got some of the harder things out of the way, like, like getting images from user uh, from the user's Google Drive, um, I'm hoping I'm hoping that uh, some of the development for the actual uh, app will begin to um, speed up uh, as as I try to proceed over the next couple weeks. Um, so that's pretty much all I can say for the current update. Um, it's looking really good. I mean, I could see people paying money to just do this, just being able to load in their models and texture them dynamically on a HoloLens. There isn't much out there uh, for apps on the HoloLens, but um, when I'm really finished, this thing's going to be one of the most powerful things you can do on, on a VR, AR device. So talk to you in another month or so.